Okay, so the first idea that we're going to look at here, they all kind of loosely connected today. Uh, the first one is general pathways. So we looked at just square grids last day. Today we're going to look at grids like this, which, you know, are either missing something or um, have sort of like overlap. Like this one has overlap in here. But um, it's not a regular grid like we've looked at already. So we need a strategy here. Any ideas come to mind? Yes. Split them up. Split them up as, sorry, like, wait. The four squares against the four squares. Good, so um, for the first one, um, that is a strategy that could work. If we kind of pretend there's two different ones, then it's kind of like the grids we've already dealt with. Um, that will work, but however, when we get to this question, because of the overlapping, that strategy doesn't work anymore. So we need a new one. Um, let's think about it. You add something in. Add something in. Yep, something's going to be coming up. Can you elaborate on it? You add a whole bunch of rectangles. <laughs> okay, uh, any other suggestions to maybe build on it? <clears throat> well, one thing that uh, is a good thing to remember, some strategies in problem solving that come up, one of them is solve a simpler problem. So that's what we're going to use to figure out how this is going to go. It's fairly difficult to get all the way from A to B um, if you try and do it all in one go. I mean, some of you might be thinking, well, can I count them with my fingers? Yeah, you could do that, but that's going to take a long time. So instead, what we're going to think about is, what's the simplest possible place I could ask this question? Like, where would you want me to place B if it was the easiest question I could make? Bless you. Right beside A. Right beside A, like here? Right there? Yeah. OK. So if I was to put it here temporarily, then what would the answer be? How many ways to get from A to B? One. One. Excellent. OK, that's what we're going to think about here. So let me just get rid of that. And we'll put a one there, OK? Uh, where's the next easiest place that you'd want me to put B? Corners. Corners? Uh, like this corner or here? Down. Or down here? Or below below below. Below. This one? Yeah. Okay, so right there. How many ways is there to get there? One. Yeah. Good, okay. So we're, we're getting somewhere now. We're not as far away as we'd like to be. I mean, ultimately, we'd like to be all the way down here, but we're getting somewhere. Where, where else can I fill in now? Corner. Uh, which corner? Top or bottom? It doesn't matter. Okay, well, which, how much is the top? This, this one right here? Yeah. Okay, so can you show me two ways to get there? No, 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 it's all, no, there's one way to get there. Still just one way, that's right. But Still just one way. Two spaces. Two spaces, yeah, but one, only one path gets you to that corner. The middle of the square. The middle, oh, you've been feeling brave? Right here in the middle? Yeah. Okay, so how many ways is there to get to the middle? Two. two. Why two? Why three? Two. How come? No. You just counting? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, let's see how far that can get us if we go on that. Okay, we're going to come back to it, though. What else can we fill in? Other corner. Other corner? So how much is the other corner? One. One. All right. Are we stumped yet? The last corner. The last corner. You want to jump all the way to this one? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, we could, but uh, it's kind of difficult right now. Um, no. Maybe. Maybe not. What's an easier one? Oh, wait, never mind. It's not important. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're trying to think of too many things at once, you're losing the idea of solving the simpler problem. So the simplest problem, and the simplest way to think about this, is let's just say I'm standing right here. Where did I have to come from in order to be standing there? Could it be A or 2? Well, I would have started at A, but yes, um, it would have been starting here, either above me at this point, is there anywhere else I could have come from? Let's keep it as simple as possible. Just the very simplest. Where could I have come from? Simplest answers. Bottom left. Bottom left, yeah. Either this spot here or this spot here. So those are the only two places that I was at previously. Other than that, there's, you know, uh, I couldn't have come from over here because I'd have to backtrack. Oh. I want to back to that bridge. Kevin just wants to go first. Yeah. I know, that's okay. Enjoy your movie. Um, so. If we're standing where I was, just down here at the X, there's only two places I could have come from, either the one directly above or the one to the left. That means there's a total of three different paths. All the paths that could have got me here, plus all the paths that could have got me here. So this way, the problem's a lot simpler. You think of how many ways that I have to do to get there. Well, there's three paths total because, let's see here, let's, we can trace this out, it's still not bad. There's one, there's two, 
there's three. And if I'm in those positions, there's nowhere to go except where I ended up. So if I extended it, this last piece here and here, it doesn't increase the number of paths. It's just using all the ones I could have come from. Okay. So if we wanted to finish this problem off, how many are there right here? Three. Yeah. And in this corner? Six. Good. And if I keep going, there'll be six, because there's nowhere, there's only one place it could have come from. Same if I go this way, there's only six places I could have come from, or sorry, one path I could have come from, so I can keep moving that six along. That means I have 12 here, 18 here, 24 here, 30, 18, 36, 60, 90, 24, 60, 120, and 210 to get to B. Okay, so this method works for all the previous grid question style stuff we've looked at. Um, it's more general purpose, but uh, it does take a little longer. So uh, my suggestion to you is if you have just a plain grid of squares, I would treat that as the other counting questions we've looked at. If it's a grid that's awkwardly shaped or different like this, then I would use the method we are employing here. Okay, so see if you can figure out the number of ways to get from A to B in this picture. Okay, so um, if we're working on this one, I'll start filling it in here. Just compare your answer with mine. Uh, the only thing that can be tricky here is if you're like me and you tend to rush when you're not using your calculator, um, you might make a simple yeah. mistake, but I think that's good at 200 there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Okay. Oops. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, some of you had hinted about this. Does anybody know, familiar with Pascal's triangle, seen it before? Know how to make it? Maybe, yeah. Not willing to admit it? It's okay. Um, so, in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the Pascal's triangle is formed, because there's some patterns in this. Welcome back, Kevin. Hey, buddy, are you going to share that? <laughs> See, if you start sharing it, there's not going to be much left for you. The Super G. Thank you, Kevin. Didn't you guys get Super G? Yeah, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> Some oh. super G, a lazy super G? Okay, anyways. Um, the edge of Pascal's triangle has all ones. And the way you get the, uh, the middle terms is you add the two above. So for example, one plus one gives me two. And if I keep going, there would be a three there. Um, one, four, six, four, one. And one, five, ten, ten. Five, one, holy, six, fifteen, twenty. Um, and I got two more rows to go. I think I'll make it uh, twenty-one, thirty-five, thirty-five, twenty-one, seven, one. Okay, last one, eight, twenty-eight, uh, fifty-six, seventy. 6, 28, 8, 1. Okay, so again, uh, the way you construct it is you take the two numbers above and they add up to that number. So anywhere in this table, the two numbers above give me the next one in the row below. 